today's video is going to be okay do over hey there guys so today's video is going to be my eyeshadow palette ranking of all the palettes that i tried in 2023 i tried 24 palettes this year and the way that I do these rankings is I rank my bottom to like middle palettes first. So that's going to be in this video. So that's part one. And then part two, I share my top 10. That's how I've been doing it for the past two years. And I think it works best for me this way. So we are going to be talking about the bottom palettes today. Honestly, I really didn't try too many bad palettes this year. I was mostly impressed with the palettes that I tried this year, honestly, I tried some really, really good brands and most of the palettes were really, really good. Um, I've tried over the years to like call down my collection and, you know, not keep the palettes I was too thrilled with. I'm sorry that this blending is bothering me. I think that looks better now. So let's start with the palette that I actually decluttered by returning it I would just put it in the bottom even though the formula was not the worst that I tried but I really just want to talk about this palette for a minute so I will show you guys a picture I'll just bring it up real quick um and the first one I wanted to talk about is the Natasha Denona I need a nude palette now this is what the color story looks like and it's a very cool toned kind of shimmer heavy palette but honestly every look that I did with this palette I was just straight up bored like I don't know it just I really felt like this palette didn't hit as hard for me compared to the other two palettes that I tried from her this year and also at the tail end of last year because I tried the my dream palette at the tail end of December so I wasn't quite able to include it in my uh ranking for 2022 so it will be included at the in the top 10 because I loved her two other palettes the my dream and the yucca palette so much more than this palette I just I was not looking forward to using this palette every time I tried to use it I only tested out five of the shimmers and after I tested out and did those five looks I had made up my mind that I just didn't want to keep it because I have enough really good neutral palettes in my collection and I was really excited when Natasha Genona came out with a you know neutral palette but I just found that I don't like doing repetitive looks too much when there's not too many matte options like there's other palettes like the going coconuts or the nude mood that are just trusty dusty good eyeshadow palettes but the difference between those and then the i need a nude palette is just that there was not enough depth in the palette for me it just felt like it looked so one note and every time i would put it on and i was finished with my look it was pretty but honestly like my bar is set so high for Natasha Denona that if I'm not head over heels for the palette, I'm not going to keep it because it's not like her palettes are cheap. And I know a lot of people loved that palette this year and it's probably going to be on the top of some people's lists. But when it comes to the I Need a Nude palette compared to the Yucca palette, there is no comparison for me because the Yucca palette is so exquisite those shimmers are some of the best shimmers I've ever tried not just from Natasha Denona but from uh any eyeshadow formula in general they are so stunning on the lids that I'm like this was the Yucca palette was the only Natasha Denona palette I needed to pick up this year and then my dream I picked up last year and I love the my dream palette I didn't even want to combine the I need a nude palette with the retro palette or the my dream palette because I just didn't think that it was special enough for me and I felt like if I was going to force myself to use this I'm like then I don't need to keep it and yes I returned a Natasha Denona palette I know people are like what but seriously like 
it if it had like maybe two more matte shades in there maybe but again I felt like she kind of overhyped this palette a lot to make it sound like it way it was way better than it actually was and unfortunately it just fell short for me so let's get into the palettes I do have so let's get into number 23 and honestly an Odin's Eye palette has never fallen on the bottom for me most of these palettes have stayed pretty much same in the rankings I've added quite a few since I did my halfway through the year rankings but this one has stayed on the bottom and I don't know what to tell you guys but number 23 is the Odin's Eye and Makeup Just for Fun Flora Story palette I'm ranking this on the bottom because these mattes for some reason I just could not get them to work for me. They are so beyond dusty and powdery and there's so much kick up in the pan. But every time I tried to apply these mattes, I tried to apply these mattes, they would just dust away. And I've never had an issue with an Odin's Eye palette before like this. This reminds me of the experience that I had with ColourPop's All Amethyst palette, but pretty much all the ColourPop palettes I tried this year were not like this. They were solid, easy formulas to use, even though I wasn't really thrilled with ColourPop this year, but I just had to force myself to try and use this, but the looks would turn out pretty, and they weren't boring like the Natasha Denona palette, but I also didn't have any problems with the Natasha Denona formula. But I'm ranking this one a little bit higher based on the color story. But also because I kept this palette. And also I can't really return Odin's Eye palettes because they're an online brand. But I might end up selling this palette. I just don't look forward to using this whatsoever. Because I dread trying to blend these mattes out. And it's such a pretty color story, and I really do love Makeup Just for Fun. She's one of my favorite YouTubers. I bought it so I could support her, and I really, really like her videos. But I don't understand what happened with the consistency and the quality of this palette. I just could not get it to work for me. So, unfortunately, this one's on the bottom. I don't know what to tell you guys. That was just my experience. I know everybody's experience is different. Um, the shimmers are really pretty though, but I don't know if it's enough for me to keep this palette, to be honest, because I even decluttered the Bailey Sarian, uh, Estate palette because I didn't think that was a good enough palette, and I actually didn't pick up anything from her Melt collection because I just wasn't interested. I'm kind of just not really picking up everything, but, um, my favorite shade in the palette is Magnolia. I usually go through and swatch all of my favorite shades when I do these videos, so this shade is such a beautiful, like, super lilac-y, sparkly, silvery purple, and it's stunning. But I even don't want to make the effort, like I've said before, with the Natasha Denona palette to combine this with other palettes. It's just not worth it to me. So unfortunately, this one is on the bottom of my list, but I have to be honest with you guys. I'm always honest with you guys on my thoughts on the palettes that I try. So that one, unfortunately, is number 23. Okay, number 22 is the first ColourPop palette on this list. Honestly, I wasn't really thrilled with ColourPop's releases this year, and they actually have slowed down quite a lot, and they haven't really released anything new in the past couple of weeks, which honestly, I'm like, what is going on? Like, I do appreciate that they have slowed down and we don't have to keep up with every single release that they come out with. And I do think that that's a good idea for them. But also, like, I was really looking forward to them, like, possibly releasing another Christmas collection this year. And I am really glad that they did re-release the um, Rudolph collection. But usually they always release, like, a Disney collab around like the holidays like around like October or November the last one that they did was the Haunted Mansion which was in September and that was actually a really big success for them but I feel like since then they haven't really done much and I just want to say before I get into it um people would get so upset when ColourPop was releasing so many collabs and so many collections and all this shit but um 
Oh my god, I forgot to say happy birthday to my friend. Oh my god, I'm the worst friend. I can't believe I forgot to say happy birthday to one of my best friends. So anyway, number 23, I mean, no, number 22, right? Am I already losing track? Yeah, number 22. Um, so I just wanted to say before I get into it that um, people were like so upset that like ColourPop was releasing like so many collabs and so many launches and yes it was a little bit ridiculous because most of them ended up looking the same this year and honestly I wasn't really that thrilled with most of their launches this year I only picked up five ColourPop palettes this year and that's the least that I've picked up in a long time but also there was quite a few brands that I wanted to try this year and we will get into them but I really was not happy with this color story whatsoever but like people were getting on ColourPop about releasing collabs and blah 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 but like Glamlight is basically a collab brand now and I am so happy for her I think she does the damn thing but at the same time all she's doing now is collabs all just collabs and I'm like when are they gonna go back to like their food themed fun interesting color stories because that's what made them unique and now I just feel like they're just a collab brand but I just think that Glam Light's releasing way too much honestly more than any other brand I feel like when it comes to the indie brands they've been releasing releasing a lot that you know ColourPop kind of took a hint and pulled back a little bit more why isn't anybody saying it about Glam Light but those are my thoughts so number 22 is the ColourPop and Alice in Wonderland palette. This is the Lost in Wonderland palette. And honestly, I don't know why I bought this palette. I just thought the packaging was so beyond cute. And I love how small it is. But I don't know what... Oh my god, can I open this fucking palette? <laughs> I don't know what the heck they were smoking when they made this color story. Like, I feel like they were kind of on drugs like the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like if they really wanted to get their point across about this being like a nonsense palette they most certainly did um these colors just don't make sense together like if they kept you know the three pastel shades in here like the pink the blue and the green those are all beautiful shades but why do we need these three we could have done like a royal blue shade to like match her dress. We could have done like a deeper kind of pink maybe. And then we could have done like a deeper green. And then maybe that would have made more sense. Or if they really did want a grounding like neutral shade, this could have been like a little bit darker. But what I do like a about this palette is that the shimmers are really beautiful in this palette. And actually the formula... I don't struggle with this formula like I do the uh, Flora Story palette from Odin's Eye. And what's funny is that every time I actually do do my eyeshadow with this and I do do a look with it, I really like how my makeup looks. I like it a lot more than the Flora Story palette. So I think I'm going to keep this just for display purposes. I don't know if I'm going to sell this at any point, but I do think it's a pretty palette. I just don't know what they were doing when they put these colors together because usually Disney is the ones that put the color story together, do all the packaging, do the names, and ColourPop is the one that just provides the formula. But mostly it is Disney that does mostly everything. But I just feel like Disney didn't really care about the color stories this year and it's kind of weird because... Over the past couple of years, they've had some of the best color stories from uh, ColourPop. But with this, I feel like they didn't really care that much. I don't know. Like, who else is supposed to be able to use this palette? I can't even get these two colors to show up on me. So, how is it that somebody that's darker than me is going to be able to even use this palette? So, it's kind of very exclusatory. But my favorite shade in the palette is Down the Rabbit Hole. It's such a stunning, like goldish blue and it's so beautiful it is such a stunning shade on the lid but I just feel like inclusivity wise their Disney palettes were not hitting it for me this year they were very 
exclusatory. So hopefully they will learn a little bit more next year, but this collection was pretty successful for them, but honestly, I should have just picked up the two blushes and the lippy. I shouldn't have not picked up the palette. I should have not picked up the palette, but it's still a cute palette, but I don't understand the color story. Like, I would have to pull in some other colors, and sometimes I don't love doing that because it's like we don't want our looks to be, like, super challenging every single time we do a... a uh, a look because like a palette's supposed to make it easier for you to do your makeup not harder you know what I mean but I do understand some palette color stories are going to be a little bit more out there than others but usually those color stories make sense and like have a certain theme or cohesiveness to it unfortunately this one didn't okay so number 21 honestly I really don't know why I bought this palette because I just find that I really don't need this palette. I It didn't really serve a purpose for me, but the formula is still great. And number 21 is the Blend Bunny Cosmetics Forget-Me-Not palette. Now, I was so excited that Blend Bunny was coming out with a um, neutral palette, but then they uh, revealed that it was going to be a face and eye palette, and it is a lot more cool tone than I expected it to be. I just don't really use these as face products. Like, all of them are really too cool tone for me. And this pink shade, I tried to use it once as a blush. And it is way too light for me. But also, like, it barely showed up. Then I'd much rather just use their uh, bare uh what is it called i always forget the name the bare cheeks palette that i'm obsessed with i bought that for a blush palette from them and i absolutely love it that it's like i haven't really been using this palette i haven't even been using it for like deepening shades these are really great deepening shades and honestly the formula in this palette is beautiful the formula is always great from blend bunny but i just don't see a purpose for me I didn't really need it and honestly I kind of regret buying it because um I'm not really a cool tone look girly I've only used this twice on my eyes and every time the the mattes blend beautifully the shimmers are gorgeous on the lids but you kind of get almost the same look every time because it's no matter what uh colors you use it's going to be mostly cool tones. So, but the highlighters on the bottom are absolutely gorgeous. But other than that, I just really didn't see a purpose for me with this palette. I have been using the shade Brighter Days though, like every day on the brow bone because it is a beautiful white shade. Um, but other than that, I'm not really using it. But my favorite shade is the shade Cheers. It is such a stunning stunning highlighter but also it's so gorgeous I've been using the shimmer shades quite a lot on my inner corners if I need like a good light inner corner shade that I don't get from one of the palettes that I'm using I'll oh my god I can't believe I just dropped the box I'll usually grab this for that reason but other than that I don't need this giant palette just for a brow bone highlight and for an inner corner highlight. But I do use these highlighters a ton. And the highlighters are stunning in here. So, um, but pretty much Angelic Nequist said the same thing. Is that she doesn't really find a purpose for this palette. But she did say the highlighters were gorgeous. But she ended up decluttering it. Even though she did really love the highlighters. So, yeah. So that one is number 21. Okay. Number 20 and 19 are both ColourPop palettes. So the first one is, uh, number 20 is the ColourPop Flirty Talk palette. Now, I actually really do like this palette. And basically all the palettes going forward, I really do enjoy these palettes. I didn't have to force myself to use these palettes. I actually think they're really nice quality. So the reason why this one is falling in the 20th spot is that 
the formula is really, really good in this palette, and I really, really like the looks, but I find that it's a little bit too one note for me. I kind of wish that there was maybe like a couple of more pinky shades in here. Like I probably would have taken out this shade because when ColourPop does shades like this, I understand that it might be like a little bit deeper for someone to pop on their brow bone that's like darker than me like maybe like a light skin tone or like a tan skin tone but for me I just don't know what to do with these kind of shades because it's not really pigmented enough for me to use as a crease shade and it's not really a defining shade and also it's not light enough for me to use in my brow bone. But this shade is really great on the brow bone, but these shimmers in the middle are so beautiful on the lids. But also I rank this a little bit lower because I do find that this shade, just my type, is kind of a dud shade for me. I tried it a couple of times. This shade, um, B Mine, is that ridiculously beautiful glitter formula from ColourPop, and that's definitely my favorite shade in the palette. It's so beautiful. It's like this stunning, like super glittery, pink, frosty, multi-glitter dream. It really is beautiful. Oh my God. Why is my light like freaking blinding you? It's right there. It's so stunning. Do you see how reflective that is? It's insane. Um, but I bought this kind of like as my perfect pink palette from ColourPop because from for some reason... No one can do like a monochromatic pink palette. It's like so unheard of. <laughs> like even though like some brands market certain eyeshadow palettes as being a mauve palette or a pink palette, let me tell you how many that just have one pop of mauve and the rest of the colors are neutral. What? Oh, sorry. So the red shades in here are really, really nice, and the shimmers are beautiful, but this shade, uh, just my type, um, I tried it with a glitter glue, and it really does not apply, but then I tried it without a glitter glue because it is a super shock shadow, so sometimes the super shock shadows just apply better without a glitter glue, like the ones that are in palettes, and it still didn't really apply like as smoothly as I would like it to, so this one's kind of a dud. It's a little bit dry too, but the rest of the palette's really pretty, but I just find that I, I don't think that this is my perfect pink palette, but I do like that they added, you know, at least two pink shades, and this shade on the outer corners is really beautiful with these two pink shades, so I do like that you can get complete looks with this palette, and it's really nice. I definitely preferred this palette over the Valentine's Day palette that they did the year before. I really did not like that eyeshadow palette and also I didn't like the blushes because you couldn't even open them but they definitely improved it with this collection. I feel like this was kind of their do-over for that collection because the highlighter that's in there is absolutely stunning. That was part of the Flirty Tall collection and I could actually open it. So <laughs> okay so number 19 is the Snow White palette. This is the uh, dreams come true palette first off the packaging is absolutely beautiful I think this might be my favorite packaging that they did this year it just really is so classic Disney and then when you open it up I love that it has the once upon a time in the on the um inside just 10 out of 10 for the packaging but the color story again super in non-inclusive like very exclusatory we have these two like super super light shades and then we have like these four mid-tone shades so really like the only shades you can deepen up with is this shade this shade or this shade these are all very mid-tone but I do like that they go with the shimmers really nicely but I do wish that they had like maybe some type of blue matte they could have like a done like a deep blue matte and with the red same thing but I did really enjoy my time with this palette I think that the super shock and this one ever after is better than the one that's in the flirty talk palette but I probably would have done 
without like the super light shades. They, are, they aren't really necessary. And they did like what they usually do with the top row of their palettes that they put like four pale shades on the top and then the other shades are deeper, which is not a bad thing. But when you do it in every single palette, it kind of gets super repetitive. And I understand it's for Snow White. I know she's super pale, but not everybody's super pale. So, and if I'm even saying that you should have done some deeper shades, just saying. So my favorite shade in the palette is True Love. And you guys know I'm such a sucker for gold, but this is like one of the best golds they've ever done. It's such a stunning, like super yellow gold. And it's probably one of the most yellow golds that I actually own. And I love that it looks pretty much exactly like her skirt. And like when you do the shimmer shades in deeper um, colors, those are more inclusive because shimmer shades pretty much anybody can wear. It's really the matte shades that you have to be more inclusive with. And I just think they missed the mark a little bit, but I did really enjoy it. And I think the formula is really nice in this one. So that's why this one's ranked a little bit higher than the other two. Okay. Oh my God. I need to hurry up. <laughs> okay. So number 18 is the Nomad Aquavango Safari palette. So out of the two brands that I was so excited for them both finally doing more neutral palettes was Natasha Denona and Nomad. Nomad doesn't really do neutral palettes, so I was super excited when they released the color story of this. I'm like, I'm 100% getting it. I love the range of neutrals in here. But I definitely preferred this palette over the Natasha Denona. You have plenty of depth options in here. The greens in here are so beautiful. And I love these more mid-tone mattes. But you also have these dingy, more murky kind of greenish brown kind of mattes. And then you have these green shades. And then you have these, you have quite a few deepening options as well. So the mattes are really, really nice in this palette. They blend out really nicely and the shimmers are really, really pretty, but I just find that they're very hard pressed and not really as impressive as I know Nomad can be, but they were good for a neutral palette. Like this is a solid formula. I just found that there wasn't anything too special about it, but I did use it quite a lot. I was reaching for this a lot, so... That has to say something, but I think I prefer the Yucca palette over this palette. A lot of people were comparing the two palettes, and it was kind of crazy that they both came out at the same time, that they both had a green kind of neutral color story, but they are two completely different palettes. Honestly, like, you can't really find one dupe. Um, there's similar shades, but none of them are spot-on dupes. This one is a lot more warmer toned. And I think it's a really pretty palette. I think my favorite shade is Nile Crocodile. I think the greens in here are really beautiful. And this is such a pretty, like, lime green kind of green shimmer. Like a green gold. And it is really pretty. It's like a warm toned green shimmer. And it is super smooth. But... I just thought that the formula kind of fell a little bit short for me, but I love the color story and I really do like the looks when I um, finish my look with this palette. I just wasn't blown away with this Nomad palette as much as I was the other two palettes that I tried this year from Nomad because they ranked a lot higher. But I picked up three palettes from Nomad last year and then I picked up three from Nomad this year. So you can tell that they're still one of my favorite brands. I'm on the Nomad train and now I own six of their palettes. So, but this one, the packaging, the color story, everything was really beautiful. It's just more so the formula. So, but it's still a really nice palette. Okay, so number 17 is another Onan's Eye palette and that is the... Odin's Eye and Batty Bean Planet Spirit Palette. This, I almost said Plant Spirit. <laughs> this palette is so the opposite of the uh, Flora Story palette for me. This palette 
is so beautiful. These mats pack such a punch on the crease and on the eyes. They are so pigmented, like literally so true to pan. These are such bold, amazing, beautiful mats. And the shimmers are stunning. The only reason why this is ranked lower is because I don't typically go for these colors all too often. I mostly wear this palette in the summertime or like the springtime, so it's not something I'm going to be reaching for a whole lot. But the formula is spectacular in this palette. I don't know why they were so polar opposite. I have a feeling that maybe they were made in different places. I don't know. This one says Sleepless. Teen Nordic AB Stockholm Sweden I'm sure the other it says made in China the other one made in China they're both the same place so I just I don't know what happened with this one but this one is so beautiful these mats are so true to pan on the eyes it's insane they're so stunning like look at this Look at this orange. It literally looks like straight up orange juice. It's so ridiculously beautiful on the eyes. And when I did my looks with this palette, I was so blown away by the, the quality. It's just so beautiful. But I think my favorite shade is this teal shimmer called... And it is different from the one in the Merry Christmas palette. And it's called Familiar. It is such a stunning green shimmer. It's so beautiful. It has so many different sparkles in it. It's like green to gold to silver to blue. It's just so stunning. That's why I love Odin's Eye Shimmers is because they're so multidimensional and they have so many different glitters in them. Um, but I think that she did a phenomenal job. I really wanted to get a palette from Batty Bean and I finally just got one of her collaborations. I just felt that the shroud ones were not really hitting it color story wise for me because those are just ones I wouldn't really use too much but this one this is so bold and beautiful and I love how it just packs such a punch and it's so gorgeous so this one is number 17 formula spectacular okay number 16 is the clarity cosmetics I love coffee palette this one I'm actually wearing on my eyes today. I decided to take a little break from the Christmas palettes and I decided to wear this palette today because I did want to film my ranking so I did want to wear at least one of the palettes that were in this video that I tried this year. So this one is the Clarity Cosmetics palette and this was actually my first go or my first uh, experience with, with Clarity Cosmetics and I just thought that this palette was such a pretty neutral palette and you guys know how much I love neutrals. But also, like, you know, some of their other palettes are a little bit too loud for me. They're very, very colorful. So I was like, you know what? Let me try a neutral palette as my first go. So the thing is that the shimmers in this palette are so good. They are so beautiful. Probably some of the best shimmers I've tried. They are so ridiculously smooth and wet looking and foiled on the lids. My prop, my issue is with the mattes. Like the mattes do blend out beautifully, but some of them kind of don't blend as well with the other. And they're very kick up -y in the pan, and they kind you kind of get some fallout. But the overall look is really pretty. Like I really like my eyeshadow today. So they do build up a lot of depth and dimension. I'm just ranking this here because it's a little bit messy. Um, but I do think the formula is really nice. I do prefer the mattes in the Odin's Eye palette that I just talked about. But that was just, again, a color story thing. Oh my fucking god. Okay. Can we, like, not make a mess? Um, but as far as my experience with it today, it was a little bit more difficult to blend out. But the mattes are very pigmented. But I did just struggle a little bit with blending out the defining shade. It kind of almost comes off a little bit and doesn't really show up true to pan. 
when you're blending it in the defining area, which was a little bit weird because I did use a separate brush for that today. Usually I'll use the same brush for the defining shade and the outer corner shade, but I'm like, since I know that I have that experience sometimes with this palette, I'll use two different brushes and I still had the same issue is that it doesn't really lay down as true to the color as you would like it to. And I know the blending's a little bit weird here, but that's just because of what happened with this palette, but I still really like my look. So I did, I used cappuccino in the crease, then I darkened up the crease more with espresso, and then I used decaf please on the outer corners. And then for the lid, I went into Americano, and it's such a pretty like super bronzy gold. And then for the brow bone, I used whipped cream. And I do like that you have these two brow bone options in here. Like I really love the range of mattes. And my favorite shimmer is caramel cream frap. I and oh, and I put iced coffee on the inner corners, of course. But do you see how pigmented that is? And how metallic? And then this is what it looks like. Like, look at how smooth that is. And that is barely swiping in the pan. Like, I might have only moved my finger around, like, once. And look at how opaque that is. That is insane. So, super, super smooth shimmer. So, that's why this palette is ranking a little higher because the shimmers are fantastic. So, I'm really glad that I finally decided to try their formula this year and try their brand. I think I like the eyeshadow palette out of everything that I tried. Some of the other things are a little bit inconsistent. But the eyeshadow palette, I just wish that the mattes weren't so powdery. But they're pigmented. At least they just don't blend away like the floor story ones do. Like you do get pigment from them. So, And they're really nice. So that's why I wanted to rank them higher. Okay, number 15. We only have... Did I say these were palettes 23 through 11 or 24 through 11? I'm, I'm hoping that I said that at the beginning. Okay, so number 15 is the Ace Beauté Aura palette. Now, I decided to give Ace Beauté another chance because a lot of people do say that Ace Beauté's formula from their website is a lot better than the formula that's from BoxyCharm and... I would 100,000% agree with that. The formula in this palette is beautiful. I loved the color story of this, that they actually put this on half price, I think sometime in July, and that's when I finally decided to pick it up. Was it half price or was it just free shipping? It might have just been free shipping because this palette's not too expensive. It's only $35. So I think I just paid the $35, but I got the free shipping. So I thought that that was a good deal because all I wanted was the palette anyway. And I was like, well, if I don't have to pay shipping, I'll just pay for the palette. And since the palette isn't that expensive, I thought that it was worth it. So I just love the range of colors in here. I love the purples and the... I wish there was like one more red in here and like... I love these purple shades and then these three mustardy shades on the bottom some beautiful looks the mattes just blend so well and they're so pigmented and these mattes definitely blend better than the ones from clarity they don't do that weird like kind of almost oxidizing thing um but also they don't just blend away a little bit but also super pigmented really nice formula and the shimmers are beautiful so I didn't really have any issues with this palette. The only reason why they're ranking lower is because just simply the color story, it's not something I'm going to reach for all the time, but I did use this quite a bit. Um, the only shade that I haven't used again is this shade, but I was able to use all the shimmers again, and I do think it's beautiful. I really enjoyed this formula, and my favorite shade is the lilac gold shade, which is called Halo. Oh my god, it's such a beautiful like cool toned, super lilac-y gold. And it's so stunning. Look at that. Look at how pretty it is. So that is the Ace Beauté Aura palette. And yeah, I really liked it. I'm glad I decided to give them another chance. Debbie told me that I should give them another chance. And I felt like I 
just really was loving this color story. Also, this shade Moonlight. Oh my god, this is such a stunning inner corner highlight. It's so shiny on the inner corners. So yeah, I really like the, the colors in here, and I think it's beautiful. So, um... Because the only other Ace Beauté palette I tried was the one from BoxyCharm, and it was called the Scarlet Dusk palette. And that formula is so ridiculously dry that I was kind of hesitant to try this one, and I'm so glad that I did because this formula is so much better. But I wish that they that brands would stop cheapening the formula that they put in BoxyCharm. But, you know, I digress. Okay, four more palettes, you guys. So number 14 is the most recent palette that I picked up this year, but I've used it quite enough, especially during Christmas time. So number, uh, I keep on forgetting what number it is, 14 is the Odin's Eye Christmas Eve palette. Now, I do really like this palette, but I have one other Odin's Eye palette that ranked in my top 10, and I preferred that palette's color story over this one but I am just so happy that I decided to pick up this palette this year I know I didn't do a haul with this but I do have a first impressions video up on it I have first impressions on all of these palettes if you guys want to see any videos or looks just type in first impressions and type in the palette like first impressions Odin's Eye Christmas Eve palette it'll pop up if you just search my channel so if you want to see any of looks any looks with any of these palettes, I have first impressions on every single palette that I try. I always film a first impressions. And this palette is gorgeous. The mattes blend beautifully and the shimmers are really stunning. There's actually three shades in here I haven't been able to use yet, which is the green, this deeper teal, and the purple. But I have used this lilac -y purple on the inner corners. And honestly, it's kind of similar to the purple that's in the Flora Story palette, so I'm not, like, too upset that I wasn't able to use it yet. But honestly, like, I think that the Merry Christmas palette was a little bit more cohesive for me, and that's why I'm glad I decided to pick up that palette over picking up both last year. But then, since they did re-release these, and I kind of had a feeling that they were going to re-release them, I'm so glad I was able to get the Christmas Eve palette this time around. I'm like, there's no way they're not going to release these. And they totally teased them. And I'm like, I knew it. <laughs> so these mattes are really pretty. But I do prefer the mattes and the shimmers in the Merry Christmas palette. But this palette is still really stunning. It's the Odin's Eye formula that I love. But I just prefer the Merry Christmas palette because that's more my cup of tea when it comes to the color story. And that one's more quintessential Christmas. But also, I just really love that palette more. But this palette's beautiful. I've been using it quite a lot. I loved the blue look that I did with these three shades. And then I just popped the silver on the lid. I also did this really cool look when I kind of did a reverse kind of crease. And I put the blue on the inner part and the yellow on the outer part. And then I put um, this gold all over the lid. And then I put some other color on the inner corners. I forget which one it was, but it was such a stunning look. So I've been having a lot of fun with this palette. And the yellow and the blue combo, I've been so obsessed with that color combo. This yellow is such a good matte, so I really, really love it. It kind of has a bit of a different formula. It's not as dry as most Odin's Eye mattes are, but they're very pigmented. This one's a bit more creamier, but it's so beautiful, and the shimmers are stunning. So my favorite shimmer is actually this blue shade called Blue Star. I love the multi-chrome too, but there's just something about this royal blue shimmer that is just so stunning. I absolutely love this shade. It's just such a beautiful, like, super dark blue but it, it just looks like midnight sky. It's just, it looks like the starry night sky. I think it's so gorgeous. It's like a bluish, greenish purple. I just love it. It's so stunning. And I've worn that shade twice, actually, and I just loved my look every time I use it. And these are gorgeous. They really do shine like Christmas lights on your lids. 
So that's why I love the Odin's Eye palettes for Christmas time. But this is a really beautiful palette. So I'm just so glad I was able to pick it up this year. So that one is number 14. Okay, three more palettes. So this is the last ColourPop palette on this half of the list. A ColourPop palette always makes it into my top 10. That's pretty much inevitable. So number uh, 13 is the ColourPop Rock On palette. So I actually picked up this palette right after I returned the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. I'm like, I need to get me a ColourPop palette that's warm tone that I know I'm going to love. And I really do love this palette. It's such a good, staple, neutral, warm palette. But you have some really nice options in here. You have an orange, you have a red you have a deepening brown and then you have these more mid-tone colors and these shimmers are so beautiful on the lids their metallics this year have been really beautiful um but especially in this palette and then the next palette that makes an appearance in my top 10 were my two favorite color pop palettes this year and they were more so neutral palettes but i actually don't own that many color pop neutral palettes I only had the Nude Mood, the Chocolate Palette, the Going Coconuts, and the Plush Like Me. So I kind of wanted to add one or two more from ColourPop, and I'm so happy I decided to get this one. It is such a pretty palette, you guys. And my favorite shade is, I think, Chasing Sunsets. I really love the Sedona shade, too. But this one's a really beautiful gold, and again... I am a sucker for gold, but this one is so foiled and so pretty and sparkly, and it has, like, such pretty, like, orangey bronze sparkles to it. I really have been enjoying this palette, and I actually got to use all the shimmers twice, and the mattes are so pigmented in this palette. So easy to blend, so easy to use, so that's why this palette was definitely higher on my list, and this shade Vortex... I'm telling you guys, ColourPop makes some of the most spectacular, like, really light shimmer shades for the inner corners. They are just so foiled and gorgeous on the inner corners. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this palette. You guys know how I feel about ColourPop, but I kind of fell in love with some other brands this year, but this palette is great. So, yeah, I'm glad that I picked that up. Of course, I needed another warm tone ColourPop palette, like, duh, but I picked it up, like, mid-September, and I loved it, and I actually got so many compliments every time I would wear it, so I made the right choice. <coughs> <coughs> okay, two more palettes. So, number 12, I actually didn't expect to really love this palette as much as I did, but also I knew that um, I was going to combine this with the first Laminatrix palette that I bought, which is the Nearly Natural palette. Fell in love with that palette this year that I kind of wanted to get another palette from Glaminatrix because I thought their formula was spectacular. So when I saw the Glaminatrix Cosmetics Rich Romantic palette, I knew I had to pick it up. So that is number 12, the Rich Romantic palette. And... At first, I didn't think that this palette had enough mattes in it for me, and I didn't think I was going to use it too much, and I was like, well, what am I going to do with it? I don't know, like, if I'm going to have enough mattes in here. You guys, the quality of this one is phenomenal. The mattes are so good in this palette, and these shimmers are stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. There is nothing like a Glaminatrix shimmer. They sparkle so beautifully and are so wet and metallic looking on the lids. But these mattes are so great. These are definitely better than the mattes that are in the Nearly Natural palette. But the Nearly Natural palette ranked higher because I did use that palette more. But also, like, I would use that palette more in general. But I loved combining the two together because the Glaminatrix Nearly Natural has, like, a lot of good grounding neutrals that I start with as a base for these mattes. And then I just add on with these deep, dark, beautiful mattes. And they're so gorgeous. 
The purples are so pretty. I love this orange and the red and I love like these murky neutrals and then the more pinky shades. The only thing that I wish that this had was kind of like a more deeper like pink shade. Instead of this shade, they could have done like a deeper pink. And then I think I would have loved the palette even more. But this row of metallics are so stunning. Stunning. And these two shimmers, so sparkly and beautiful. I think dinner is ready, so I'll be back. Okay, so I wanted to finish up talking about the Glaminatrix palette and then wrap up this video. So yeah, I really did enjoy this palette. I think it's beautiful. I really loved combining it with the nearly natural palette, but I also thought that the looks that I did with it on its own was really beautiful as well. I used these two purples and this brown with like one of the purple shimmers and it was stunning and I love using these two shades together with this shade and like the more tangerine matte. It's so gorgeous. These shimmers are so duochrome and shifty and beautiful and super sparkly. I just can't say enough good things about this palette. And I think my favorite shade is the middle one, which is called Rich, which is obviously one of the signature shades. But this is such a beautiful, like, gold, shifty, greenish, gold, pinky shade. It is so spectacular. And do you see how it shifts? Like, there's nothing like a laminatrix shimmer. I'm telling you guys, this brand is worth the hype. Like... Their formula is beautiful, and I really think if you were interested in trying Glaminatrix, I think they have beautiful palettes, and they are definitely worth the hype. Like, they're a little bit more pricey than Cosmic Brushes, but some of these indie brands are killing it. So, and I really love their updated packaging with, like, this really nice, like, leathery kind of feeling. And I kind of like that the pans are smaller. I know they're kind of charging the same price, but they definitely didn't skimp out on the quality. The quality is pretty much the same, if not even better. So you're basically paying for the quality. I don't really mind the small pans if the quality is going to be better. Okay, and then number 11 to finish out this uh, ranking of my first part of my eyeshadow palettes is the Fantasy Cosmetica Druid palette. Oh my god, you guys. This formula is so beautiful. I am so glad I decided to try Fantasy Cosmetica this year. I was so impressed with the formula of these. The mattes are just so beautiful and pigmented and the shimmers are so smooth and stunning on the lids. I just really loved every look that I did with this. I know it is a bit limiting because their uh, mattes are very mid-toned and deeper and darker in this palette, but... If I just decide to add like one mid-tone kind of neutral uh, brown and then I just use like these deeper browns, then I have a neutral look and then I just pop on one of these beautiful like tannish shades. But I'm so glad I picked up this palette. This one was on my list for quite a while and I, I, I'm happy that I decided to wait for their updated packaging because this packaging is so stunning. Probably some of my favorite packaging that I've gotten this year from a brand but they really do have gorgeous eyeshadows and I think my favorite shade is the shade balance and I did get to use this a little bit more but they're just so soft but they're also like so shifty there's so many beautiful shifts in their uh shades as well depending on how you shift it in the light it's like blue to green to tan to purple it's just so spectacularly beautiful. They're like just as good as the Glaminatrix ones, but the Glaminatrix is just a bit more pigmented and super shiny, but Fantasy Cosmetica ones are really stunning as well. So yeah, I really enjoyed this palette as well, and I'm glad that it topped this first half because I was just really impressed with this formula, and I really just it's just such an easy palette to work with and the mattes just blend themselves and the shimmers are just so smooth and stunning on the lid. So that's why this one is topping the list. So yeah, that is pretty much it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you guys tried any of these palettes this year. What are your thoughts? Which one was your favorite? I would love to know which one wasn't your favorite. 
let me know everything. So please like and subscribe. Follow me on my Instagram at CBW819 and check out my Poshmark at the same handle. And stay tuned for part two, which is going to be, again, my top 10 favorite eyeshadow palettes of the year. Um, I just prefer doing it this way. I think it's the best way for me to do it. And I can't talk about all the eyeshadow palettes in one video. It's just too long. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. And I did get my Christmas nails today. And they're super cute. I like that I did like the more green tone this year. I usually do red, but I'm glad I did the green. And I think they turned out really cute. So yeah, that's it. Bye.